my hand. Are you ever just like on a Sunday and you're like, what am I gonna record for the vlog? We gotta go shopping at Aldi. Yeah. Barry was like, could someone tell me how to do this Peter McKinnon style B-roll? Like, I wanna do it, but there's no tutorial that really is how to do it. I'm like, yeah, man, I'll do it. I'll show you how I do it. I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I'll show you how I do it. Let's do this thing. Barry Video YT, that's his name. All right, Barry, the key with this style of B-roll is you gotta find visual consistencies from like the thing you're gonna transition in from to the thing you're gonna transition out of. So let me show what, I brought another camera here. Let me try to show you what I'm talking about. We can't say expensive. We want Aldi to be happy about us being here and recording this. Well, <laughs> it just, when you compare these I'm just pencils. Kidding. Oh, but so there is a less expensive option, both from Clancy's. Right, right, yeah. Clancy's gives you options. I may get kicked out of the store because I don't have permission to shoot here, but I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do an Aldi commercial at the same time. So it's just hopefully it all works out. So I noticed this, um, I noticed this visual consistency between this sign right here and then these crackers down there. It's like the sign and the crackers are gonna be the transition point, all right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Camera's great for stills, but I can't use it for this because it doesn't have a flip out back screen. I can't ever check focus. I'm gonna have to use my phone. The name of this challenge is gonna have to be the in real life B-roll challenge because like, I don't know if any of this is working. <laughs> the easiest one to use is always the floor, all right? So you can always just resort to the floor. We're gonna go from this extremely well-priced balsamic vinaigrette to the floor, and then we're gonna pop up to the cart and Avery's gonna be riding in the cart, all right? That's what we're going for. You almost have feeling of bass when you were swinging it around, it was like this close <laughs> to getting your nose. Again, this is the in real life B-roll challenge. Okay. I missed it, I missed a shot. 12 ounce Red Bulls at Aldi for $2.49. Kefir, staple at our house. It's like a probiotic yogurt, 279. Two, come on, come on. How many shots have I gotten? I think I need, Peter McKinnon says three or five. So if I got three or five. Is it? They were like 12 bucks, I think. Had to take a quick break here, because Avery was crying, so we're probably not gonna have a transition like from the store into the parking lot home. But you can forgive me, right? You can forgive me, all right. I think it was pretty successful. Let's get it back into the final cut. I'm combining the in real life B-roll challenge with the one trip grocery challenge. All right, I'm here. It's 4.30 a.m. I'm ready to teach you how to do this. I'm still pumped, I'm still jacked. Just my kids are asleep. I gotta be a little bit like quiet. All right, let's do this thing. Set the end point right when I start moving because I want it to zip in. And then come up here and then I hit focus on Aldi. So I'm gonna put a marker. Let that play for a second, and then I start to move, hit another marker, come up to my sign, and I did get way too close to that, but I wanted- Bad news, Barry Video YT. I did this whole, I did a whole like screen record and like narration, trying to teach you how to do this like in Final Cut, but it basically broke my computer. <laughs> my computer just not powerful enough to be able to process this multi-cam clip and it's 7.43 a.m. and I have a meeting at nine in Carlisle, which is like half an hour away. So I'm gonna chalk this one up as a failure, man. I, I thought I could do a tutorial and I couldn't, all right? So there's stuff to learn from this. I'm gonna process it. I'll figure out how to learn from this today. Just literally can't, I'm trying to, I'm trying to edit this thing. My computer literally can't do it. It just keeps stopping and freezing and everything's crashing. I need to export this thing. I'm sorry. I hope you got, I hope you learned a little bit about the whipping and stuff. Basically, um, when it comes to the edit, you got your whole 120 frame thing. You need to speed up the part that you're whipping. Then you need to kind of let it go slow at the part where you're like hitting focus. Then you speed up to the next part. Then you let it go slow, then you speed up. And then you the transition, the visual consistency part, you're just putting those two clips together and then because it's visually consistent, it's taking you from the first thing to the second thing. I just gotta roll it. I just gotta roll it and show you what I did now as opposed to showing you how I did it. I'm sorry. I'll see you tomorrow.
<laughs> Welcome to Coffee on the Couch in the Comments, episode 5. So here's what just happened. I was taking a quick snooze on Amber's lap while she was looking at the comments. I wasn't planning on taking a snooze, I was just like laying on her lap. And then I said, what? She said, what? And I said, did you say something? She said, no. I said, I thought you said B-roll. <laughs> She's like, no. I was like, yeah, you kind of whispered it like, B-roll. <laughs> Obviously fell asleep. <laughs> so that just happened. Okay. How do I say it? Uh, Joe? Hey, Joe? Hey, Joe. It's just hey, Joe. Yeah, I specifically really appreciated that you mentioned, depending on what your goals are on this platform, if they are big, well then you need to expect lots of hours, hard work, and dedication, just like any other goal you pursue if you want to do well. Some of the most successful people are workaholics, but the time management and balance between YouTube life and real life is so important. Couldn't agree more, man. I really, I'm glad that that segment resonated with you. I'm glad that Amber brought that up, that real talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, man, yeah, it's it is super important. Yeah, I think I was prepared that it was gonna require time when we had the conversation, and Cody kind of asked, you know, can I do this? Next comment. Yeah, hit us. It's a da boom boom. It says every day is like you're running the Olympic torch and lighting all these fires as you go. Thanks, man. What about that fire segment? Did everyone see that fire segment from yesterday? A lot yesterday? of people like the fire. <laughs> that was cool. I learned that trick in 10th grade uh, in, I think, it might have been in physics, but that doesn't make sense. So maybe chemistry, but I don't really know. It might not even been 10th grade. It was high school. But we learned that when you increase the surface area of an object, it can become extremely flammable. I don't know how you want to apply that to your YouTube life, but feel free. <laughs> Rick Bijin? Bijin. Bijin. It's cool. Let us not Rick. It's cool. Yeah, good stuff. Said, we feel very welcome. You inspire people over and over and over. Hashtag no small creator. Hashtag fire starter. Which I totally loved. I, I teared up at the hashtag fire starter. I was like, it's so true. From For how many people have responded to you like saying that they're starting something new or they're encouraged and inspired and they're doing stuff. Mm -hmm. It is that, you know, yeah. you're, you're lighting these sparks and people, you're encouraging people mm -hmm. to like fan their flame. Yeah. Finally, I just Last one. love that Chris Walter commented, but your shirt is so colorful. <laughs> Not currently, but it was last night. <laughs> I was wearing an orange shirt. I told him it was laundry day, which I don't think was actually true. I think there was one of these, but there's no rules. You know what I'm saying? There's no rules. There's no rules and no small creator. But it is super obvious when Cody wears a non-black t-shirt. I know. I know. I look different. I look different in yesterday's vid. I like, I like the addition of color occasionally. Sorry. I am what I am. Let's tell the story. Okay. So it's travel. It puts you in a different mindset, puts you in, in a, you know, you have to stress level is high and you get to see the true colors of the person you're falling in love with. Mm -hmm. Junior year, uh, Messiah has this thing called J term and they still have it, right? Yeah, right. But you can go and do what's called a cross cultural. We did that, we went to the French West Indies. Fantastic trip. We absolutely loved it. I wish I had video. I, I didn't even bring a video camera on that. I brought a stills camera on that. So sorry. Sorry for, for that. On the way home, mm -hmm. we're flying over the Bermuda Triangle. And on an airplane, there's two windshields. There's an inner windshield and an outer windshield. Are you going there right away? And there's a heater. What? You're going there right away? What, you want to set it up a little more? Yeah, that was always like it more exciting. All right, tell them. So we're like an hour into this trip. Did, um, I ever, did I ever talk about this on the vlog ever? Mm -mm. All right. This is the first time you're hearing this story. We're an hour into this trip on the way home. We're watching a movie. I don't know. Do you remember what movie? It was a boxing movie. The I Champion think. or something. Re re reunite. Rebuilding the Champion or. 
It was a boxing movie. Rebranding the champion. And I remember smelling something that was a little Ooh. weird. And then suddenly, like, the lights flickered, movie shut off. Kind and of, then like, all the, the lights, lights went, went off. off. Completely. Inside the plane. Um, and I don't really remember. I don't have, like, an understanding of time. I do. Time. Let me tell you. What? Of time. Like, what happened... How soon the flight attendants... It was immediately. Flight attendants started running up the aisle. Just one. We were in the back, and she ran... One flight attendant grabbed the fire extinguisher and sprinted to the front. Like, sprinted to the to the cabin. Mm-hmm. And we're like, uh, okay. So, then, like a while later, the pilot came on and was like, we had a heater malfunction in the windshield. No, 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 no. The pilot came on and said, there is smoke in the cockpit. We are making an emergency make, landing. Going to have an emergency landing <sighs> in, in West 90 Beach. minutes. In 90 minutes. We're 90 minutes away. Because we were over like the Atlantic Ocean. We were terrified. And it's, it's totally dark, you know, everywhere. Because you're over the ocean. There's no lights from land. So we knew we had 90 minutes to wait. And then they proceeded to instruct us very specifically on if we have a water landing remember this, this is what is you do how specifically how you get the life your seat your seat like out we actually had to like get it and like feel the strap to like know l legit where it was yeah um nobody i was surprised that nobody at the time was like screaming hyperventilating like, freaking out yeah. at least it wasn't obvious um then they had asked for some uh, volunteers, and Cody volunteered to be basically bodyguards for the flight attendants. Just if, crowd control. If we were supposed to have a water landing, a water landing, or any kind of emergency landing, where they would have to open up the emergency exits for fear that people would just sprint and try to get out, and then the flight attendants wouldn't actually be able to open up the emergency exit. But we didn't land in the water. We That's made it fine. the whole way to West Palm Beach. Smell, most smoke didn't get worse. Nothing. So what had ended up happening? Like we landed. It was the, I think the smoothest airplane landing I've ever had in my life. And luckily it was 70 minutes instead of 90. 70 minutes and 90. But there were fire engines like all on the tarmac driving next to us on the tarmac like right when we landed, which is really crazy. There's also an illusionist that was on the plane with us, and he did a magic show like while we're That's waiting for our next plane. What's his name? Wayne. <laughs> Wayne Hoffman. Hoffman. His name's Wayne Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Check out that illusionist, Wayne Hoffman. He, I was, that I did was, one of the tricks with him. That was, it was really fun. That was like ideal. I mean, it was awesome. Totally. We had totally made kind everybody. of feared like we could potentially die on this plane. Yeah. I mean, everybody I think had the thought this might, this might be the end of our lives at some point in those seventy minutes. I didn't really think it would be. I don't think I ever. Thought okay. That. I, I had a moment, but I was okay with it. And, and that was it, just a moment. But that was like comic relief, taking your mind, I mean, talk about taking your mind off of the situation, especially the fact that we we're gonna have to board another plane to fly home then. Right, right. Yeah. But it all perfect. went great. And then uh, we found out that a heater had malfunctioned in between those two windshields, in between the outer windshield and the inner windshield, which caused the inner windshield to shatter and fall down onto the pilot's hands and then it cut their hands and uh, put smoke in the cockpit. So that was an adventure and we fell in love even more. <laughs> Get pumped for tomorrow. I was just gonna add that it was really, of course Cody was the one to call into local news stations as they were oh, reporting. Yeah. yeah, right. Um, so and they were even, reporting it wrong. I'm like, someone give me the phone number. I gotta call these people. And also, you had like a blurb, like a sentence yeah. on the Today Show. On the Today Show. Because the Today Show got a hold of somebody. And Here's what I said on the Today Show. It's my five minutes of fame. I said, it started to smell weird. Was that it? That's what I said. And then they cut it. And they cut it. But you talked to a person from the Today Show. That's pretty cool. Hmm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you got to do now? If you've watched this far, you must subscribe. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I have anything up here, but subscribe down here, ring the bell, and um, oh, hit hit like. You might have forgotten to hit like. I always forget to hit like. If I've ever watched one of your videos, commented and loved it, but didn't like it, I'm sorry about that. And comment. We might not. You should address, comment. We might not address it tomorrow, but since we might. tomorrow's our proposal story. We're still gonna hit. How. We're still gonna hit three of them. We'll still hit three. We can always address it later if it's a question. There's no rules. After the proposal story, it's like... Comments all day. 